What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're going to check out 10 wrestlers who no sold their opponent's finishers. Now, sometimes in wrestling, they do certain situations or things happen, and you be like, wait a minute, he didn't no sell that. He no sold that. And, and it's one of those things where no selling a move is not really a good look, but no selling a finisher, that can definitely kill like a, a wrestler's like momentum. Like, for example, if you guys remember The Fiend versus Seth Rollins in Hell in a Cell, how can anyone forget? The Fiend was no selling the curb stomp, bro. Like, he was kicking out at one type shit or getting right back up. Like, it, it, the move was like nothing. It was child's play. It was like, I don't know how many curb stumps he got hit with and he was still kicking out at two. That's the perfect definition of no selling. An opponent's finisher kind of ruins the credibility of the finisher. But we're going to check this out. Appreciate all love and support. Let's get right into this video, man. Important part of wrestling is selling. The fans have to believe wrestlers are hurting each other in order to buy into the match. When nice. a wrestler no sells their opponent's move, it can really damage someone's career, especially yep. if the move they aren't selling is a finisher. Natalia is a WWE veteran. She's been with the company for well over 10 years mm -hmm. and is a real professional. That's why it's so surprising to see her do this. In July 2022, Natalia was wrestling a match against Liv Morgan and Ronda Rousey at a WWE live event. The women were having a great match and nothing was out of the ordinary. That was until the very end. Liv Morgan hit her finisher, Oblivion, and got the pin. As soon as the ref counted the pinfall, Natalia got up and rolled out of the ring, and she acted as if nothing had happened. It was incredibly strange, and no one is exactly sure why Natalia no-sold Liv's finisher. Yeah, it looked like she was saying something to her. Like, if you look at the footage, it looked like there was like some maybe some tension there. Because she definitely no-sold and got right back up and left. But she must have been upset about something. Yeah, she was upset Kurt Angle's about WWE debut was a special moment. He was the first Olympic gold medalist to wrestle for the company, and his first match took place at one of WWE's biggest pay-per-views, Survivor Series. Unfortunately, Angle's opponent, Sean Stasiak, nearly ruined it. To close out the match, Kurt Angle hit the Angle Slam and got the three count. About five seconds after hitting his finisher for the first time, Stasiak suddenly stood up and didn't sell the move at all. It's really strange Stasiak yeah. did this. He knew this was the finish of the match and had to understand the importance of making Kurt Angle look strong in his debut. Nevertheless, Sean Stasiak did what he did and was fired from WWE not long after. Oh, in his damn. first WrestleMania match, Triple H took on the legendary Ultimate Warrior. You would think even if Triple H didn't win, that having a match with Warrior would elevate his career, mm -hmm. but the opposite happened. The fight started when Triple H attacked Ultimate Warrior before the bell was even run. The Cerebral Assassin soon hit the pedigree, but instead of staying down, Warrior got right back up and <laughs> looked as if the move it, didn't do any damage. Now, no selling moves was part of the Ultimate Warrior's character, so that mm -hmm. sort of explains why he didn't sell the move. Still, Warrior sold Triple H's punches better than the Camp King's own finisher. In yeah. any case, after <laughs> Warrior got up from the pedigree, he mounted a comeback and beat Triple H in under two minutes. The Undertaker's Tombstone Pile Driver is one of the most devastating finishers in WWE history. Mm -hmm. It's very rare for people to kick out of it, so surely nobody would no sell the move, right? Well, back in 1991, Hulk Hogan took on The Undertaker at Survivor Series. In the final moments of the match, the demon from Death Valley picked up the Hulkster and hit the Tombstone pile driver, only for Hogan to immediately get back up. He didn't sell the finisher at all and acted like the Undertaker never even performed the move. Like with yeah. Ultimate Warrior, this was part of Hogan's character, this which helps was. explain why he did it. Unlike Triple H though, Undertaker still won the match when he hit a second Tombstone pile driver with some assistance from Ric Flair. Ironically, not only did Hulk Hogan no sell Undertaker's finisher, but he had the nerve to claim that the Undertaker hurt him when the dead man hit the second Tombstone stone pile driver. Of course, The Undertaker protected Hogan from any injury, yeah. and the Hulkster was just trying to get one over on Taker. Ironically though, The Undertaker would later no-sell two other wrestlers finishers. What's worse than no-selling one person's finisher? No-selling two people's finishers. Not long after winning the World Tag Team Championship, Kane and Rob Van Dam were given a surprise challenge when Hawk and Animal returned to WWE. While the Legion of Doom was tough, Kane and RVD managed to stay alive. The Tag Team Champions ended the match with Kane choke slamming Hawk, followed by RVD hitting the five-star frog splash. Love Almost him. immediately after the referee counted the pin, Hawk was back on his feet and didn't show any signs that he had just been hit by two amazing finishing moves. <laughs> In fact, RVD was selling the finisher better than Hawk was, yeah. and Van Dam was the one who hit the move. It's unknown if Hawk's no-selling of RVD and Kane's finishers had anything to do with it, but either way, he and Animal were not offered full-time contracts with WWE after the match. Oh, Ironically, wow. this isn't the first time Hawk no-sold Kane's finisher. A few months after he debuted in 1997, 
2007, Kane interfered in a tag team match involving the Road Warriors. The Devil's Favorite Demon hit Hawk with a pile driver, but the Road Warrior didn't sell it at Damn, all. Damn, he just got now, right back up. it's worth mentioning that Hawk, as well as Animal, were famous for no-selling big moves, so this wasn't out of character. Kane would then hit Hawk with a choke slam and a second pile driver that Hawk did sell. But it was a bit insane seeing Hawk completely no-sell Kane's first <laughs> finisher. Right in the back. main event of the 1998 SummerSlam, Hulk Hogan and Brutus the Barber Beefcake took on the team of Macho Man and Zeus. It looked like the match was all over when Macho Man got on the top rope and hit his iconic elbow drop. Instead of staying down though, the move did the complete opposite and the Hulkster was back on his feet in seconds, acting as if he had never gotten hit by the move. Again, this was Hulk Hogan's classic Hulk up, but unlike The Undertaker, Macho Man would end up losing the match when Hogan pinned Macho Man's tag team partner, Zeus. At Impact Wrestling's biggest show of the year, Whoa. Bound for Glory, former WWE stars John Morrison and Austin Aries faced off for the Impact World Championship. It was a competitive match with many great moments, but the spot that everyone remembers was at the end. First, John Morrison hit Aries with a super kick, which some wrestlers have used as their finisher. Then, Morrison hit Aries with Aries' own finisher, the Brain Buster, and finally, Morrison hit his finisher, Starship Pain, and got the pinfall. Yeah. Pretty awesome ending. But Austin Aries got up right away and didn't sell the finishing moves at all. Morrison, on the other Damn. hand, lay on the mat and sold the battle he had just been through. Talking about it afterward, John Morrison had this to say. It's a match that I'm very proud of, and it's one of my favorite matches. He might not be one of my favorite people. When Taz made his... Oh, yeah, you can tell there's, like, some issues there, because he literally hit him with, like, three fucking finishing-type moves just for him to eat the pin, do the job, and then for him to roll out the ring like, uh, fuck you. Damn, that's... That shit fucked up. W debut in 2000, he was off to a hot start. However, only a few months later, his career was starting to go downhill. This became very clear when he began feuding with Raw commentator Jerry Lawler. While it was a pretty humiliating rivalry for Taz, he at least got one cool moment. During Lawler and Taz's SummerSlam match, the King hit his pile driver finisher. However, Taz almost instantly got up and shrugged off the move like it was nothing. It does help though when you don't have a knack. The RKO <laughs> is one of the coolest and most popular <laughs> finishers in wrestling history. History. Randy Orton will strike from out of nowhere, and the person taking the move will act like they are knocked out cold. Well, almost everyone. Yeah. During the Viper's feud with The Fiend in 2021, oh Orton and the monster came face to face in the ring. Randy made it seem like he was going to set The Fiend on fire, but ended up striking with an RKO instead. However, the masked monster yep, got up as if the finisher right. had no effect on him, and he then- I was just talking about how The Fiend was just no selling for Seth Rollins and kicking out like it was nothing. And Randy with Sister Abigail. This wasn't the only finisher The Fiend would shrug mm. off. Mm -hmm. After Raw had gone off the air, Seth Rollins and The Fiend fought each other in the ring. Rollins nailed his adversary with the curb stop, only for The Fiend to instantly stand up. Seth didn't let up and was eventually able to get the better of the masked monster. Now we talked about Hulk Hogan not selling The Undertaker's finisher, but The Dead Man has done some no-selling too. In the first ever Hell in a Cell match, The Undertaker faced his iconic rival, Shawn Michaels. At one point, Shawn nailed The Phenom with Sweet Chin Music, only for The Dead Man to Dude, immediately to sit up. up yeah. Of course, the sit up is a trademark of The Undertaker, but it did seem weird to see him do it so fast after yeah. being hit by Michael's finisher. This wasn't the last time Taker would do something like this either. At WrestleMania 29, the Phenom defended his undefeated streak against CM Punk. <laughs> like many of the Undertaker's WrestleMania matches, this one was brutal, and both men fought out of the other series. This was actually moves. an underrated match. However, when match. CM Punk hit the dead man with his finisher, the GTS, Undertaker no-sold it yep. and instead hit the Tombstone Piledriver. However, the GTS was hit rather awkwardly. Yeah. It's unclear if that was intentional to explain why the Undertaker didn't and sell it, or if the move was just botched. Either way, it's worth mentioning. Another embarrassing thing for wrestlers is when they get defeated by their own finisher. To see that, but yeah, man, it's, it's something about some of these moments. You can tell some of them was like some personal stuff where they roll out the ring and then walk away like nothing ever happened. That can definitely ruin the credibility of someone's finisher. Um, but not a lot of these were pretty interesting, man. I, me personally, I'm not a big fan of it. If I hit my, if, if I hit the finisher on you, my finisher on you, you should be out. It should take you a little, a couple minutes for you to get out the ring. It shouldn't be no, all right, I'm about to go to the back and eat and catering. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, that would kind of piss me off as well. So comment down below. Let me know which one of these were kind of, um, kind of shocking to you. And if you ever remember a time outside of the, the list that's on this video where wrestlers, they would get hit with a finisher and they just no sell it. Let me know down below. But I appreciate all love and support. Roll to 100K. I appreciate y'all keeping me. See y'all next one. Peace.